born in Ellis County. I'm Amy Troll and I'm with ellisdownhome.com. And joining me today is Bob and Kelly Phillips. Thank y'all so much for coming on. Um, we are so excited to, uh, to have uh, the festival happening this weekend. And I know you guys are too. And especially after our horrible year last year where <laughs> we didn't get to have it at all. So, yeah. Um, so, so let's just start out. Um, this is the 50th anniversary season, correct? For, for Texas Country Reporter. And that is just incredible. Um, and so Bob, you know, tell us a little bit about how that feels to reach that milestone and, you know, maybe right. some of your favorite moments along the way. You know, it, it, first of all, I need to clear up and make sure everybody understands I was only three years old when I started. <laughs> and if you believe that, I've got some land I want to sell you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's it, it's one of those things that's it, that's really very weird because when we started the show almost 50 years ago, the TV station where where it began uh, at Channel 4 in Dallas, they didn't exactly commit to it being an ongoing series for a while. Uh, they, it was going to be a series of specials, maybe. So they said, go out and do one. Mm -hmm. So we went and we did one episode. They put it on at 6.30 on Saturday night on uh, October 7th, 1972. It was the very first one. And the on Monday, but you know, this is years before we have email and all of that. On Monday morning after that, the phone calls start pouring into the TV station. Um, the, then letters come in, you know, on Tuesday and after people saying, "What was that? We we loved that, whatever that was, because it was very different for the time." And they said, "Are you going to do another one?" So the bosses in the car carpeted office at the end of the, you know, on the corner um, of the building said, hey, do another one of those. So we threw together another one. And this went on for weeks and then months. And then it was a while before they really committed and set those of us who were working on it down and said, this is going to be an ongoing thing. We're going to do this every week from now on. And what's interesting is every show that Bob did initially he would sign off like this was the last show. And he did that, you know, after months and even after years. I, and, and especially at the end of the first season, you know, television has always worked on, you know, on the seasonal basis. It kind of goes along with school years, uh, the old fashioned television from those days. You would start off in September and you do new shows all the way through May and then you'd be off for the summer. That's when you showed your summer reruns. Mm -hmm. And so that last show in May of the not just the first year, but for the first three or four years, I did this big goodbye. This has been great. You know, nice traveling Texas with you. You know, you know, sayonara. Good, you know, so long. Right. And and uh, then they would say sometime over the summer. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. Some more of those, and so it went on like that. But then, if you fast forward the fiftieth season, it's almost like you took a nap and you woke up and you, you know, and all of these things have happened in a dream. Uh, it it doesn't feel real sometimes. You know, this is the longest running independently produced television show in American TV history. Nobody's ever done a show like this for this long uh, or anywhere close to this long yeah. and you know, a lot of people ask me well why did you keep doing it and the the real answer probably is I was having a great time and I couldn't figure out anything else that I wanted to do where I thought I would have that that good a time so here we are 50 years later that's great let's talk about that theme song okay like the original score um hill country what was it called the hill, hill country, country theme. theme hill country yeah. theme yes yeah. so how was that something that the network show or the station shows or not exactly it was it was quite by accident as a lot of things in the early in the early years of this work yeah. um we we kind of divided up duties, you know, so-and-so you do this and so-and-so you do this and so-and-so will edit this part. And it was just a group of us that were putting that very first show together. 
Um, and there was a, a guy who worked in the promotions department at Channel 4, and he was really talented. And he had put together a promo. It was a, a, a two-minute promo for the station, which is very unusual. You know, you, these days you see four-second, maybe 10 or 15-second promos every now and then a 30-second. This was a two-minute promo. Um, and it was basically <clears throat> talking about the people and the places in the viewing area for KDFW TV. And this guy decided to call it that area for country for channel four. Everybody who could receive our signal lived in four country. Mm -hmm. So he did a promo. And the promo was simply some beautiful shots of small towns and rural areas, just beautiful Texas scenery. And he chose the Hill Country theme to be the background for that promo. And at the very end of the promo, it, there were no words in it, just the, the theme music and these beautiful pictures. At the very end, it said, this is for country. Well, it comes time, you know, not too long after that. First of all, people responded to that two-minute promo. Uh, they loved that. Mm -hmm. And it, it wasn't too long after that they decided, well, we're going to, we're going to try this, this show idea. First thing we had to do was select a name. And I said, hey, Kerry named the area for country on his promo. Let's make this the for country reporter. Mm -hmm. As in, you know, uh, it, it was almost like a beat. Uh, you know, it was like a news beat. Uh, you know, instead of covering uh, the police department and the school board and all that, we're covering all of four country meaning all these little towns and out-of-the-way places and rural areas in North Central Texas. And then we had to pick a theme, a theme song. And once again, I said, Carrie already picked a theme for that promo. He did. So we ripped off this guy's promo is what we did. Now, he was the director of the show, so he didn't mind. He was very happy about all of that. But it was just, you know. And, and people have loved that theme. Oh, yeah. uh, it's unbelievable. I'll tell you this an interesting story that we, we rarely bring up. In 1983 or four, or somewhere in there, we got a new, uh, a new employee uh, that we had hired from a station in Wichita Falls. He came to work with us. He was very, very talented. He was, he was with the, the show for years and years. And the first thing that he said when he came to the door is, you guys have been using that same theme music for more than 10 years. We ought to change that because people get tired of it. And we all looked around and went, really? Okay, well, let's give it a shot. We, we, we chose some other piece of music. We went out and we shot this new opening for the show with that other piece of music. And you would have, you would have thought that we murdered someone. <laughs> the audience, I, I, I expected to look out the door and see people in front of the TV station with pitchforks and torches. <laughs> Because the the hate mail and the phone calls came in and said, how dare you do this? We quickly changed it back yeah. and never mentioned it again. But it, it it was, it's just so beloved by people. And, you know, just about every high school band in Texas at some point or another has played that song. Uh, uh, military bands. I know the Fort Hood uh, band and the Sam Houston um, uh, Army base in San Antonio, their band, they both play that song. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, somebody, when we first started the, the Iraqi war, somebody sent me a video that they had shot on, on, their, uh, on a little camera they had over there of the Fort Hood Army band playing our theme song on a parade field in Baghdad. Wow. And they it's said, we special. thought you would, yeah. I mean, that kind of thing, you know. Yeah. And so now it, it's to the point where. We if, can't change it. Ever. Yeah, no, you would never change <laughs> that, ever. You, know, you, might, you can change a lot of things, but don't, don't mess with that. that. Theme song, no, you know? no. <laughs> well, thank you for yeah. sharing By that. By the way, I'll, I'll interject this. That song was written uh, partly by a very famous Texas writer named Cindy Walker from Mahia, Texas. She's in the Country Music Hall of Fame. She okay. wrote all kinds of huge hits for a lot of very famous country musicians. There are words to it. And she wrote the words. A guy named Glenn Paxton, uh, who's a movie theme writer, wrote the music. And 
early, early in his career, before he was really well known, Willie Nelson recorded it on an album he did called Texas in My Soul. Okay. And uh, he changed record labels after that. Somehow the master to Texas in My Soul was destroyed. So there, there aren't any, any original copies anymore of Willie Nelson singing that theme song. We used to use that on the show. We had a copy of it and used to use it on the show all the time. We haven't done that in 20, 20 or more years. Yeah, wow, that's so neat. <laughs> so so this <clears throat> festival coming up this weekend, um, also celebrating a 25th anniversary for the festivals, correct? Correct, correct. yeah. And okay. the 20th for it being in Waxahachie. Okay, it, so. Yeah, Lewis this Patrick. is number 20 for Waxahachie. Wow, that, I didn't realize it had been that long. That's, that's incredible. So. Yeah. So tell us, you know, where was it before Waxahachie? And then why did you guys choose Waxahachie? Um, we, we did it in Dallas at, a, at a, uh, an historical park called Old City Park in downtown Dallas mm -hmm. uh, for the first few years. And it wasn't supposed to be a festival in the beginning. Uh, we, called it the, we called it the Texas Country Reporter Reunion. Mm -hmm. The idea was that we, the people who work on the show, we're getting together with people who had been featured on the show. Okay. And we were just having kind of a, like it was a family reunion at this park. Mm -hmm. Well, we mentioned it on the show that we were doing this and we look up and there's 4,000 people that, uh, <laughs> that just watched the show who showed up. That was the very first year. And every year, it got, you know, a couple more thousand people. Mm -hmm. And then, it, you know, we're, we're getting up around seven, 8,000 people that are showing up, on, you know, once a year for this this Texas country reporter reunion. And we kind of looked up and said, guys, if this thing gets, we're already, we've outgrown this park. We got to do something. And I used to live in Waxahachie uh, back in, in uh, around 1980. I lived there for five years. Okay. And um, one of our, one of our original guys, Jason Anderson, who went to Waxahachie High School, he drum was a drum major. major. There. Yeah, uh, you know he's a he, he was a hometown boy who was who was born and raised there. Um, he was working with us, and I said, "What are we going to do?" And he goes, you know, "What we ought to do is we ought to move it to Waxahachie." Uh, and I'm sure these people would you know would just really love this idea. He was just so positive, and we went we drove down um, to take a to see where would we do this. We were looking for a venue. And as we got down there, Jason Anderson said, this is silly. We're looking for a building or something. We don't need a building. We need to see if they'll shut down the streets around this famous, beautiful courthouse square. Mm -hmm. And let's do it right here. It's and been in how many movies? 33 feature films have been made have been made in Waxahachie. It's a movie set. <laughs> the entire town is a movie set. If Steven Spielberg's going to build a, a town that he wants to look, you know, like this friendly American Hometown, town. Yeah. He's going to build lots of <laughs> <laughs> so, so we said, this is right here at our, in our, our back door. It's 30 miles from Dallas, 30 miles from Fort Worth. Uh, people from Austin and San Antonio and Houston can get here pretty easily. And so we moved it to Waxahachie that first year. It, it, when we presented, we, we went first to the Chamber of Commerce there and asked them, that was in the days before there was even a, there was a CBB, and we went to the Chamber of Commerce, and they said, "What do we? What can we do to help you?" Yes, let's do this. We moved it there, and the first year we had more than twenty thousand people show up, and we noticed. I, Kelly and I asked people all day long, "Where are you from?" And they were saying things like El Paso and Texarkana and Dalhart and Brownsville. And now they're saying Pennsylvania and Florida <laughs> and Nebraska. They're coming from all figure. over the country to, <laughs> to this festival. And, you know, we looked up after a few, a few years of doing it in Waxahachie <clears throat> and realized we were the largest one-day festival in the state of Texas. And I've got to say, you know, there's a core group of, oh, of yeah. volunteers that help put on this festival. And they're in Waxahachie. And I tell you what, I work with them every year. They are fabulous. They make this thing what it is. And truly, the TCR Festival is that, you know, old timey, 
you know, yeah. fair, fall festival type. Which place. is what people love. About. Yes, yeah, and that's what they love. Yeah, and this group is a volunteer group. <laughs> Nobody ever, nobody's ever made a dime off of this festival yeah. except for the vendors, you know, which is, is you know, that's intended. And, and, you know, we don't make any money. Waxahachie doesn't make any money. We don't charge an entrance fee. There's, yeah. you know, parking it's, is free. Everything's free other than what you purchase at the festival. But the, the thing that we all get back there is... Waxahachie is, you know, it's always been beloved by by people who knew the town. Well, now people from all over the place know Waxahachie. Mm -hmm. and, and there are a lot of people it. that, you know, watch the show. They hear about Waxahachie. They come to the festival and they end up moving to Waxahachie. We, we know several that have moved to Waxahachie. There was one lady who, who called your CBB in Waxahachie and said, I want to know more about it. I live, I live in Florida. And I heard about this town on Texas Country Reporter, and I saw that festival you do there. I'm looking for a place to move. And she moved to Waxahachie from Florida. That's I incredible. mean, that speaks volumes yeah. about the town and the people, yeah, the people yeah. of Waxahachie. Yeah. Well, I grew up there, so we have we have deep, deep roots in Ellis County. And um, and so and for so many years, you know, you just you grow up where you grow up and you don't think about it. And um but now being an adult and working and and being able to see so many people moving in and enjoying it and choosing Waxahachie it's so special and it is really it's really meaningful and I'm so proud of my hometown and well and having a family there too yeah. I mean you were raised there and now you've raised your family there yeah it's very if, you were, if you were to move away Amy I promise you the day would come you'd, you'd be you'd dying want to, go back. to move yeah. back <laughs> Yeah. It's one of those places that yeah. if you don't realize how wonderful it is while you're there and you go away from it, you will. you'll soon realize and you'll be saying, I've got to go home. Yeah. It's just that kind of place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so let's talk about this weekend specifically. <laughs> yes. So 20th, 20th year in Waxahachie. Mm -hmm. Um you know, the, it's the year after COVID, so we're all celebrating that we can actually do things Get out. again <laughs> and have some fun. And so what are some of the things that are planned for this weekend specifically? Well, what's interesting about this year is, you know, we had to miss last year because like you said, of COVID. And this year, we have, the response has been overwhelming. We had to increase the number of booth spaces that we have in Waxahachie. We've expanded this thing to not one stage, but two stages. Yeah. We've got 300 plus vendors. We've we got usually two, have 200 vendors. We've so got two food more. courts. Wow. I mean, it's huge. You can have, you can come to this festival. You can have anything from, you know, a grilled cheese sandwich to lobster rolls from Cousins, <laughs> Cousins Maine Lobster uh, to Big Doobies, which is a, a Cajun flair food truck. Don't forget Thomas Tufero, the Thomas New York Tufero. cop who makes hot dogs out of his hot New York hot dog stand. We've got mm -hmm. pies out the wazoo. We've got Judy Pie. We've got Cakes by Birdie. Uh, the three Brothers uh, three Bakery brothers, out of Houston. Slayton Bakery. Mm -hmm. The uh, Uncle Ray's Peanut Brittle. Uh, uh, the food is incredible. So we're, we're just going to eat all day. You know, you know what? <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you something. The food at this festival rivals the food at, at the, the state, state fair. fair. Uh, we've got more variety mm -hmm. yeah. at this festival than you're going to find even at that huge. Well, camp. a couple of years ago, we decided, you know, instead of just having booths of food, we would invite food trucks mm -hmm. to submit applications. And then a committee would go through and pick out the best food trucks in the state. And that's what we have at the TCR Festival. So we're, we're we've got what twenty five or more food trucks, food trucks. Uh, plus all of these people who've been featured on the show who come, and then um, we've got vendors. This is a great place to do your Christmas shopping. Everything oh, yeah. is handmade. It's one of a kind. You can't find it. You know you can shop on Etsy all day long, but why not go and visit these people talk and, to them. and find out exactly what you want to get you know, your best friend, your spouse, your, your kids, because this is a great place to do it. I wish I had more time to go around to all the booths and do my Christmas shopping. And you could buy something for me. Yeah. I could. Yeah. <laughs> we'll think about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's really cool. Like, you know, if for people that obviously live in Ellis County or, you know, been through Waxahachie, they kind of know the layout of downtown. But for those that maybe don't, 
it is really interesting how we have our rail yard park now, which is on the kind of southernmost end of downtown. Right. And then, you know, several blocks, you know, of, you know, walking to get to the square. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of gives you an idea of how, how far, you know, yeah, how, massive how, many, this is. how many booths and how many. We're covering trucks. all of the downtown area this yeah. year. And I want to say something about that stage down at Rail Yard Park. You know, every year we get people from Ellis County saying, hey, why can't we be on the main stage? And the main stage has been limited to people who have been featured on the show. Well, now that we've got a second stage, there was a competition for just Ellis County residents to apply. So that's who's performing. On the stage. And it's called the Grown Local Stage. These are all local bands and, and, uh, and musicians. And dance troops and yeah. musicians. Dance troops, yeah. All of that kind of thing. So it's all local talent on the Grown Local Stage on the southern end. And then people who've been featured on the show over the years. By the way, the, the people that we call our house band, it's, it's a group of guys out of Amarillo called the Prairie Dog. They started a garage band when they were all in high school in Amarillo eons ago. They're still together, all of these. This is their 25th appearance They've at been this at every festival. festival. Every one of them since that very yeah. first one. So that's why they're the house band. And then we have several others who've been there. Brian Hauser's been to almost every one of them. Um, and, and so these people are on stage all day long. And at the end of the day, of course, a free concert by our headliner. Uh, little Texas, you know, be doing God Bless Texas and yeah. and and all of those great songs that, that, that they did. Uh, so, you know, once again, it's all free. You know, just come out and enjoy it. And we've got a kid's area. So, I mean, if the kids get antsy, I mean, this is all outside. And then on top of it, this year, we've got our first ever dog walk, which will benefit yeah. the Hank and Eli Fund. And the Hank and, Hank and Eli Fund is a story that we did. And it's basically veterinarians across Texas and even across the country that help service members who have had dogs, service dogs, who may have had cancer and they can't afford the care for their dog. But without that dog, they'd suffer PTSD even worse than what they had. So this is a great way to give back to that organization, to our military, who's done so much for us. And that's at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Yeah, down at Getson Dinner Park, you know, they'll, and they'll take the, the walk and biking trail mm -hmm. all the way up to the... To, Rail Yard Park. Yeah. And, you know, that's to raise money for, for this charity. Uh, this You're invited is, to bring your dogs. Oh, and yeah. And, and to the festival. And strollers and... Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, you know... And that's one of the things I like about the festival, too, is that you see all kinds of people, all ages, from all over the world. It's just, it's just a great gathering of people. And I've also got to mention, I mean, I know I keep mentioning other things. There's but more and more and more. There's more and more, but we've got this incredible car show. Yeah, that car show. You know, that, I've, gosh, they've been coming for almost 20 years <laughs> to, to walk at you for this car show. And uh, they have a competition. Mm -hmm. And you'll people see, can come and register that morning. You'll, you'll see you'll see some of the most beautiful old, some of the old muscle cars and that sort of thing. Then there's a guy who's been coming to every festival. He brings the Dallas. No Holcomb. He brings the Model, the Model A Club out there. So there's something for everybody in this. And then, you know, besides, you know, we mentioned our food court. The 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 food, not just around the square, but all over that that part of Waxahachie. And even, you know, out on the northern end and everything, there's such great food there that, you know, every restaurant pretty much fill, fills up on the day before and the day of the festival. And we love seeing that, uh, you know. We've been told it's there. the largest one day. It's the largest. Uh, yeah. Some people have said that this is the, the biggest revenue day. All year long. For all the vendors of Waxahachie. And, Waxahachie. and we love that because we love the vendors That's there. That's the yeah. idea. The, you know, all the businesses. Yeah, the, you know. They're huge supporters of the festival, too. Absolutely. Always have been. Yeah. Well, thank y'all so much for coming on and for just, you know, sharing your a little bit of your story. And, um, you know, I, I manage Ellis Down Home, and we have recently started doing video stories. And mm -hmm. I have been forever inspired by you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and and so I, I really try to model the stories I tell after a Texas Country Reporter. And 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 I say that, you know, people will say, well, what did, 
what is Ellis Down Home? What do you do? And I'm like, well, think about Texas Country Reporter, but for Ellis County. <laughs> and so I actually That's say that. That's kind of part of my, you know, helping people to understand what we do and kind of our heart behind it of just really featuring really neat people and what they're doing and um, their talents or just how they're giving back to the community. And so um, I love what I do and I love what you guys do. And uh, let's just all keep doing it. <laughs> Absolutely. Just, just keep doing stories about people and you'll never run out of story. Exactly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, thank you all so much again, and we're looking forward to this weekend. And um, what time does it start Saturday? Eight o'clock is the the dog walk that starts at eight. The festival starts at nine. Although um, the square is usually full about eight o'clock in the yeah. morning, people yeah. come early for some. And it's going to be great weather. Yeah, we could not have asked for better weather. You know, most this. of the day it's going to be in the in, in the mid to upper seventies and clear skies. They say all day Saturday. Uh, I think we're supposed to hit a high of about eighty. What well, could be better than that? You know, I mean, this yeah. is just it's perfect for for what we're all going to be doing there. It's going to be a great time. This is this will, I think, be the biggest and best festival we have ever done. I think so. All right. Well, I'll let y'all get to it, and we'll see you this weekend. All Thanks, right. Andy. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.